Hey, welcome to this new tutorial where we're going to be working on QuickBooks Online. Uh, in this video, we're going to be touching so quickly uh, some modules. Uh, here about the recording series and invoices on QuickBooks. Uh, let's get started. So, how do we create zeros or record zeros and invoices in QuickBooks? Um, to record zeros in QuickBooks, you go to the icon here and uh, you come here and enter the zeros receipt. If the zeros was done by cash, but if the zeros was uh, done credit, uh, I credit zeros, then we will create invoice and receive payment against the invoice. So I'll start by creating the sales receipt, then we'll go ahead and create an invoice. So I set the sales receipt. So here is the interface of the sales receipt. The very first thing is to select the customer to whom we are selling. So I'm going to create a Customer's name, which uh, I'm going to give the name of all our customers. To sell to those uh, passing customers, we don't necessarily need uh, to keep uh, their accounts or to keep their names or records in our books. So, this in case we're, for example, selling a product or service, uh, whatsoever. Uh, at this level, you put the date, the date of the transaction, and uh, I'll be given all the information about the customers and his email. Will definitely appear at this level. So here we definitely have the possibility to, to enter the, 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 the service or the product that the customer is buying. So here we already have a list of some products and the services that uh, we are rendering to customers. But if there is a new product, we can definitely take a new and add the product. Um, here I'm just going to say um, where well, we are we're, 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 we're making an installation, a landscape uh, installation design uh, for a customer. Um, say it was um, 50,000 for example yeah I would definitely allow one if it was a product and that we are selling like two or three products I could put the in. If, uh, if if this item line is taxable we could take here uh, tax so that it should calculate tax on this item in, uh, as we are going ahead we are going to see for the, how to set up uh, taxes so if there is any other item line you need to add in there you just add it and uh, at the end of it you are going to see the total amount value that the customer is paying. But before that, at the top here, you will notice that uh, there is payment method. You can select, for example, the payment method cash. And uh, uh, deposit to, it's very important to specify the account in which um, uh, the money, the money the customer is paying is deposited. Presently, the account selected is on deposited fund. Um, if uh, actually the customer is paying by check, then uh, you might want to, or the person is, 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 giving, is, is giving some check that we will we'll have to to go uh, check it out from the bank, then we can select the account on the posted fund and transfer the fund later on. But here, yeah, uh, I'm just going to, to I, I add an account for, for cash, or I just use a, a checking account. So I'm just going to make a, a means of payment to be checked and select our checking account. However, uh, all the, the, the different accounts where you receive money, you could have it here and select it and all have the possibility to create um, a, a new one. So uh, from here, if uh, we are giving any discount to the customer, to specify whether the discount is in value or in percentage. So, if uh, for example, uh, percentage if I'm giving one percent discount, so you notice that as, as I put one, it will, it will put the percentage and calculate one percent of the amount of uh, the invoice. And if it is taxable, you then have the possibility to specify um, what what sales tax to apply to, 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 to the item or to the document in question. So, from there, um, yeah, you can just uh, either you take save a new save and send or save and close. So in my case, I don't want to send the email to the customer. So by taking save and send, it's going to, to, to send an email to the customer uh, with the, a PDF file of this uh, sales receipt. So here yeah, we just take save and close, and that's how you, you, you make a, a sales uh, sales receipt. It definitely means that you've made a sales and the payment was received immediately on, uh, on the same date. If you come here to the sales center, uh, if you take a sales uh, on your vertical um, line, of its bar, uh, and you get, for example, to all sales, you have the possibility to see um, a sales uh, overview of the business. And uh, as you can see here, is the, the most recent sales I made, um, sales receipts, other customers, and you can see uh, uh, 49,500 just because you gave a discount of 1%, which was 500. And um, yeah, you can actually have the possibility to edit it if uh, you make a mistake, and yet you have the possibility um, to resend it or to make a duplicate or to void it or to delete it or to print so um 
The next one is how to create an invoice on your own. So if you come to uh, new, you have here the possibility to create an invoice. So when an invoice, an invoice is used, an invoice is used when you're selling to a customer and the, uh, the customer is not paying uh, all the quality of the money immediately. Uh, you then create an invoice and give him a due date of payment so that people should be able to track uh, the number of days uh, the customer will have to pay you. Um, so we actually help you manage your accounts payable. Uh, I mean, your account receivable on one side. So I'll definitely open the invoice. First thing is to select the customer to make selling on credit. So I'll take, for example, full cars as a customer. And uh, you'll see the information about the customer will definitely appear at this level. And uh, I specify the terms of payment. Net 30 days means uh, the customer's uh, due date will be in 30 days' time after uh, the invoice date. So if I want to create other terms, I could just add new and I will have the possibility to create other terms like net 50 days, the net 90 days, and so on. So I'm not going to create one, I'm just going to allow you the net 90 days. And you will see if I'm recording uh, the, the invoice today, you'll see you count 30 days, add it. To the, to the invoice date to get the due date. Um, at the bottom of still at the top, you will not see any means of payment like we did uh, at the level of the service receipt just because it's an invoice and uh, it, it shows uh, an amount payable. Uh, yeah, I mean, it shows an amount receivable from, from the customer in question. So, so let's uh, select, for example, the service or uh, yeah, design. Say uh, we're we arranging some design service to, to a customer. Or my people are selling the product, it must not be every service, just that the company I'm working with is more of a service uh, based business. But if we're arranging, for example, uh, or selling, for example, products, we can select a product at this level. If the product name doesn't need it, we'll add new and uh, having the possibility to put the entity uh, for, for the item itself. So I'm going to also add another thing uh, maintenance and repair, for example, landscape. Um, let's say uh, design uh, is uh, 75,000. And the year uh, maintenance 50,000. So we have rendered any service to a client or a customer worth 125,000, and uh, it's not big. That's why we're creating an invoice. Now, at the bottom here, you can have uh, the possibility of adding a discount where um, you, you're giving a, a discounted percentage or in value. If there's any discount, you're in there. Um, if uh, there is any sales tax attributed to it, you select the sales tax. Um, let me just give an example. If I can, I, it's true we're going to see later, but I can add a new, a new uh, sales tax. Like for example, in Cameroon, the sales tax here is 19.25, uh, which is for value tax. So uh, it could either be a single uh, tax rate or a, com uh, a combined uh, tax rate where there are ranges, and uh, if uh, the, the amount falls between the specific range. Uh, you will definitely, definitely apply it. But what I want to enter is a single tax rate, and I'm going to call it, for example, uh, sales. For example, and uh, here I will definitely uh, put the agency name, like uh, who's the tax collector. Um, I'm just going to put uh, any uh, agency, uh, like CDE, beyond the, beyond the six, and uh, here um, I have to put down the rate, which is going to be 19.25. To five, so already the, the amount is in percentage, so I don't need to put percentage again, and I and I click save. So yeah, if I want to apply uh, sales tax, I'll just take it this way. But as you can see, a uh, valid sales is selected, but it's not yet calculated, just because I've not mentioned whether the items are taxable or not. So we could mention it one, uh, the ones that are taxable, the ones that are not taxable. So you see, as I'm selecting them as being taxable, you see it definitely calculates the fat and. Uh, uh, you give me the total amount of zero. At this level, we can put uh, a message on the invoice and again, uh, a message on the statement that will, be, uh, that will be sent to the customer. If there is any attachment with this invoice right here, a, a, a quotation, maybe a contract that has been done with uh, the client in question that we want to easily have uh, access to it later on, we could definitely uh, click on this and then uh, select the document or the, the, four, the, the file from our computer and, uh, and save it. So. At this level, I'll, for example, save. I can save and close, or save and new, or save and send. So that is it. That is it. So I'm just going to take save and close. And uh, that's the sales on credit that's just been done. Save. So at this level, you see a new sales, which is during 30 days' time. Um, and uh, in our sales center, we are the level of sales center or sales. You will have an overview uh, on the dashboard uh, saying the showing. Um, a deeper about uh, the business, like there are 10 overdue uh, invoices, there are 21 open invoices, and uh, recently paid uh, 13, 13, 13 invoices or 
of a layout that the invoice is presently paid. So what happens when the, the, the customer comes and they pay this sum of money? They will either be at the level of the service center and take care of receive payment. Uh, so if you take care of receive payment, it's still the same thing as coming to you. And you take care of receive payment. The difference is that if you come in and take receive payment, you still have to select a customer um, who from whom you're receiving payment. Um, but by clicking on receive payment here, since this is already associated to an invoice, you will definitely uh, select the customer automatically and permit us to make a payment. So I'm going to click on receive payment. So from this level, I can now mention the date. Uh, the customer is making the payment and I select the, the account for which I'm receiving the payment. At this level, you will then see the information about the invoice. You can click on this and take you back to the invoice. So you see the details. And uh, here is uh, the original value of any balance. And here is the Yes, we have the possibility to insert the, the advance because the, the customer can be paying partially or completely. So this is where you enter the partial or the complete payment. By allowing all the amount, it means you, the customer has paid everything. But uh, by putting a particular sum of money, say for example, um, one hundred thousand, you, you will notice that um, if I come down here, um, if I apply this one hundred thousand, it will subtract from one hundred nine thousand and it gives us a new balance of uh, forty-nine thousand. As an uh, amount still to be paid. Yeah, I have the possibility to collect payment. This is in case uh, the customer is not going to uh, pay the, the remaining balance, then you can clear payment to, to turn his account to, to zero after this payment, uh, which is uh, not actually uh, advisable at this level. So, yeah, I'll just take a save and close to acknowledge uh, the sales and the, the, the receipt of uh, payment. As you can see, if you check very well for who cars customer. Create an invoice one of the nine thousand. Now you can see the status is actually paid with forty nine thousand zero. Now it definitely means that if I receive, I receive another payment, we still take receive payment or we go to the icon here and take a receive payment. And from then you will have the possibility to download select the customer from whom we are receiving the payment. It's for quarter, uh, for car, and you see here uh, the opening balance is now forty nine thousand instead of one hundred forty nine thousand. So that is it about uh, making the uh, yeah, making a uh, sales and the sales receipts uh, in the people's uh, online. So now uh, we go ahead uh, regarding expenses and bills. So what happens uh, when you enter an expense or when, when you incur an expense in your business? Uh, in Quibus online, you can definitely uh, come at this level and, uh, and uh, you have the possibility to enter an expense, write a check, create a bill and pay the bill. So expense if you if you create this document this, these two documents are similar uh, either you write a check or you enter an expense so uh, if you incur an expense and you pay for it then you enter either a check or an expense but if you incur an expense and uh, you do not pay for it then um, you will have to enter a bill so um before we, we, we go ahead with that what about in expenses uh, uh, checks and, uh, and bills um you could record an expense and associate it to a particular project because um, uh, if uh, you're managing projects, okay, we will see that later. I've not had a uh, project activated yet. However, if I have to enter an expense like a transportation expense, I'll just come here, expense, and then the expense form is definitely going to open. Yeah, as the expense form opens, um, here I can select the vendor from all the PE. Yeah, or the person um, who is uh, collecting the, the money. So at this level, I could have other vendors to manage uh, some expenses that are coming, uh, that are going to, 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 to vendors, for example, or to suppliers that we don't possibly need to keep uh, track of. So so uh, I'm just going to use a vendor called Telephone and Record a different expense. So I will have to specify the checking account or the account from which I'm making the payment. So if I'm using, for example, a savings account, it's, the balance is 800, for example. If I use, for example, a checking account, and this is the balance, it is this money that will help or that will be used to record uh, the payment in question. So here I'm going to I'm going to put uh, an, an expense, I'm going to, to call it uh, telephone, uh, telephone expense. Yeah, so we'll see what we're paying for telephone expense, uh, say uh, 10,000. So what's this billable? Billable is to is to mention where this expense is associated to a particular job or project. Uh, if you're dealing with projects um, and you do not want to enter in the project area in order to record an expense and you're already at this level, 
you will have to here on the label and select how it's available. And here you can see you can select the customer. And uh, when you're running projects, a customer or uh, a project will be under his customer. You can definitely come here and select uh, the project uh, in question. Or if you're, 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 you're meeting this expense and this expense associated to a particular customer's work, then you can come here and uh, and uh, mention the customer in question. So what happened is that uh, you will come here and give you, uh, you, will, you will have the possibility to have a report about the customer to know how much money you receive from that customer and how much money you will be spent might be rendering the service uh, uh, to that customer so and in the same way it works with the uh, projects if you have a project and that you're recording an expense you just simply come and select the project so that the expense will not be a kind of general but it should be specific it should be specific so so the, to the project in question uh, so that you can make reports for specific projects so i'm just going to say uh, this, uh, this is in relation to the whole cars because if uh, the expense is general and it's not for a specific it's not uh, redirected towards a specific customer project then you might not want to select the vehicle if the expense is uh, liable to taxes like VAT, then you might want to apply a uh, tax uh, so that it, it should calculate the tax and apply to it so um in recording expenses uh, there are always two to parts basically the category details and there's the item details the category details as you can see this category details item details and what i was entering was under category details category details is where you enter expense lines especially items that are located in your chart of accounts so like expenses like different type of expenses depreciation utilities uh, travel uh, any other thing or might be if you're buying an asset uh, and you don't want to go post an account name free making debit and free you can definitely come here and record an expense if you buy for example a computer equipment you know computer equipment will definitely be an item in your chart of account so if you if, 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 if that's the case you definitely have to come here select the computer equipment uh, account you must have created and uh, go ahead and uh, and, uh, and the amount you, you spend in acquiring, for example, the computer uh, equipment. Um, so the, the fact that it is expense doesn't mean the fact that the document is expense doesn't mean it can record only expense accounts. It can only record uh, assets accounts, uh, liabilities accounts. Just that you need to understand the concept. You need to understand that when you create this document, the checking account or the payment account that is mentioned, you will always be credited to the debit of the item. You're definitely putting at this level category now the second part of it is item zeros item zeros it is in case you 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 making you making the purchase of an, an, of, of an item that is being sold like um, a product or service by making an expense or uh, acquiring products so you will you will see here uh, the items zeros the drop down is against show items that exist in our that exist in our list of products and services so this is for products and this is for expenses in terms of account numbers so if, for example, I'm buying uh, some products, let's say I'm, I'm selling and I do sell uh, some products, let me just create a product name here. If I do sell a product, let's say it's, it, it's an inventory product, for example, so let's say uh, it is a olive, olive oil, for example, it's just an example, and uh, that uh, this olive oil, for example, the, 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 the inventory account is definitely going to be. Uh, Inventory asset. Uh, if there is any sales value, I put the sales value here, say the thousand. And, and if there is any uh, cost, I will definitely have to come down here and mention uh, the cost, say five thousand. Um, and at this level, I allow this the, the income account and the expense account. Uh, so just the product example. So you see, if I am definitely buying this product, I will create an uh, expense uh, form. And also if if I am actually buying and paying immediately my supplier, uh, in that case, I will definitely let me close this. I will definitely come here and specify or select the item I am, I am actually I am actually selling. Oh, here yeah, is an information that's lacking in each other case. Just going to put zero. Yeah, just going to put zero under the initial entities as a two big So just close this. Still not here. Okay. So also if I want to add uh, an image to it, I could add it. So you see, in terms of item, if I'm selling, if I'm buying, for example, oh, yes, closed. Um, I can come back to the expense center and to see the, the expense I was actually creating because uh, I mistakenly closed it down. So the expense center, you have the possibility to see all the expense lines you've been working on. So for example, it was this one, I would then take uh, and so edit it so I can continue uh, edit, editing it. Yeah, so like I was saying at this level, I will definitely then put the quantity of uh, the, 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 the item equation I'm buying. I will say I'm buying uh, 20 units and uh, the, the unit 
the, the price is for example five dollars you see you complete the amount so just make this and that this area is for for products or this area is for account numbers and the pay an expense when you begin the payment immediately that is why you are mentioning the payment account which i selected uh checking so from here um, definitely the take for your save and get. so you can see you can add both like you can be buying goods then you incur an expense like, like transportation expense you add you add it there and the total will represent the total amount of money you've actually uh, spent uh, on the different surveys or products you're you buying. So I'll just take them the same and close. So what if um, I'm incurring an expense and uh, I, I'm not paying immediately? I'll have to create a bill, then pay the bill later. So the same way we did for expense, everything is the same. The only difference is that there's no immediate payment. So I'll just create a bill for an example. So I get here, I begin by selecting the vendor from, from the vendor um, or the, the supplier or the person I'm, I'm getting my a service or a product from on credit. Uh, let's say this one. Uh, I, you, as you can see, there's no checking, there's no payment account. There, 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 there's instead the possibility to select um, the terms of payment, like not 15 days to say I need to pay the supplier, for example, in 15 days' time. Here I then uh, enter the thing that I am getting on credit or that I am, that I am, that I am carrying and not paying immediately. Usually, um, there are some expenses that, I, that if we are following, for example, the accrued accounting system, there are some expenses that are usually incurred at the start of the period, you know, um, and it is very important, for example, to, to, to enter them uh, such that um, we begin to track our accounts payable, uh, we record them at the moment where we begin to incur the expenses, like, 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 like accounting professional fee, if uh, the, the month starts, uh, obviously, uh, we have uh, an existing contract with, for example, uh, an accounting firm. It definitely means that um, by, by the start of the month, we have started uh, using the services of an accounting consultant or keeping firm. Uh, it definitely means that we will start by creating a bill. Then, if my bill was paying them at the end of the month, we definitely end up. Another case would be, um, uh, for example, uh, rent. Rent at the start of, of the period, uh, like the first day of the month, we really begin to incur the rent. So, we, we, we begin to owe the landlord so we can create a bill then by the moment where we, we make a payment we definitely go record the payment uh, the vendor I've selected here is the accounting firm might be uh, yeah it's the accounting firm so I'm just going to select the accounting and uh, then um, I put the amount of money we pay to, to the accounting firm might be uh, so, uh, so that's five thousand uh, one thing and the year um, if, if it's billable or if it's to be attached to for example to a particular project or customer to make it uh, selected from here but it's, it's a general experience for the business uh, and uh, I'm just going to put the terms here to be like 30 days to say okay uh, or I could create some terms or, or, or I could just uh, customize it uh, put maybe uh, yeah. new on, on the 30th of, of, of June so from here I put I get now if there's any other category item I did it, but if, if, if it's actually a purchase of goods then uh, the item like product or service would definitely uh, enter here so this is in case of uh, yeah, products or services one by but if it is uh, an expense by incurring we'll get it we'll get get it done under category 30 those so from there uh, if there's any uh, memo memo is a description you give it to the document so you can easily uh, look at it later and yet if there is any attachment you, you want to give it or uh, like a document um, that is associated you can, you can, you can take it there then you also have the possibility to, to make the transaction recurring. Most 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 transactions or most documents we create is always this function make recurring. Making a transaction recurring it means that we online will automatically post it at the given date, at the, at the date you've, you've mentioned it. Like first of all, say, let me let me save and close. Then let me show exactly how you can make a recurring transaction. So I will put it here make recurring or um, when you're out of that you form a level of the item. There is something here for recurring transactions. There is a recurring transaction level the gear icon list recurring transaction. This is where you can create recurring transactions. Recurring transactions are transactions that repeat themselves automatically uh, on, the, on, on the particular interval. Uh, I'm just going to create one. They already exist in one, so I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to make it to be for, for rent. And you specify the type of document, um, the, the type of entry it should be making automatically. It's a very facilitated work. You can actually uh, post the, the entry uh, on your behalf on the page you've, you've mentioned when, when creating it. It, it. it could be an invoice, it could be a journal entry that you want to post uh, on, on a constant basis. I'm going to make, for example, for a bill, and I'll take it okay in order to create a recurring transaction for a bill. 
your again transaction for you to create here i'm going to give you a list first uh, rent rent like i'm going to call it monthly rent monthly rent so um i'm just going to, to schedule it. it it will be in the form of a reminder uh, so that at the specified date it will always remind you to, to, to post this transaction but i'm going to schedule it um as i schedule it um, um create like you should create how many days in advance um i'm just going to put here zero and yeah i specify the vendor or the, the, the supplier or the account that it will be um, it will be it will be crediting each time it is time to record the transaction so um let me just let me just select the i don't know exactly the name of the landlord here but i'm just going to say i'm just going to create an account here for landlord <laughs> just an example um, and, uh, for example i click save so how would the interval how would the interval be it will be daily it will be daily recurring transaction and it is a transaction that repeats itself every day every week every or one every year you, you just mention it right for example i'm going to make it more day and um, um, uh, and like like on on what time like is it on on the on the first or the one or the three of what um, i'm just going to say or i'm just going to say on the the one like the one of every one month it will be on the one of every two months it will be on the one of every three months uh, it will be on 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 on, on week one of every uh, i don't know it depends whether it's weekly or monthly or whatever so yeah second for example monthly so i'm just going to say uh, the the one of every one month so if it means first january you post it first february you post it first march you post it um at this level you now mention when when this when this recurring transaction should actually start so i'm just going to mention since we're already uh, around the 11th of june i'm just going to make it to be a uh, uh, idea it should start on the first of july and uh, i can i can i can give an end date when this transaction this recurring transaction should end again I, I can select that okay it should end by the end of this year but i'm just going to say no because rent is something continuous and in case we change your partner then we can definitely come and change the recurring transaction amount um and yeah i can give the terms of, of payment which is 30 for me uh this level i can now mention uh, the, 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 the information about the bill is it a category detail or an item detail so i'll make it a category detail and we'll call it rent for example yeah rent of lease yeah and uh, let's say rent of lease every month is uh, 50 thousand you, you will see now um, it's not going to post it now but you to make it a recurring transaction so i can save the template if i'm done it definitely means that on every first of the month the software where you're connected or not whether you're connected or not the software is going to make an accounting entry for you um that is it about the recurring uh, transactions so uh, we're actually talking about you we created a bill and we wanted to pay them the bill so i'll take the bill the bill we earlier created this when we definitely uh, uh, decide to go and pay for supplier the sum of money we're going for him so uh, as you can see all the accounts payable are then showing up there there are some of them that are really overdue um yeah so this is the the, the the recent one i made if i'm making a payment i just take it and i mention the amount of money i'm paying it will be a partial payment or complete payment then i take a I take a save and close um i've never mentioned the, the, the account through which the most i'm making the payment yeah. so, so I selected the checking account and I'll take the same address. Yeah, so if I get for example so the expense center will be clearly visible that uh, I created a bill of seventy five thousand per feet the seventy five thousand back. So that's it. Alright, alright. We continue with the reconciling banks and the credit card accounts. So, uh, yes, about doing a reconciliation between our bank statements and our bank account. So, how do we go about that? Um, very first thing is to come to a Pbooks account and uh, go to reconcile. You go to the get icon and then you take reconcile. So, as you take reconcile, you will have the possibility to then um, uh, mention the checking account or the account you are actually reconciling. So. What happens is that at this level you need to select the account itself like the bank account you you are reconciling but before that you must have forgotten the bank uh, statement from your banker um 
So in the case of uh, this uh, tutorial, I have made a, a sample uh, a bar statement at this level that we are going to use uh, to make uh, the reconciliation as an example here. So I'm going to select this uh, account and then next information is to check whether the beginning balance in your bank account is exactly the same thing as the beginning balance in your uh, bank statement. So as you can see here, it's equal. And here you have to put the ending, the ending balance, the ending balance of your bank statement. So you get your bank statement and you check what's the ending balance. And the, this is, for example, um, the ending balance. So let me just get it this way. So it is then this balance that we will be reconciling in QuickBooks, the balance that is visible in your bank statement. And here you put the ending date that brings this balance. When you have a balance, it definitely means that um, this balance is as at a particular day. You might have um, gotten the bank statement from the bank like uh, two days ago and you're reconciling today after two days. The date you put in here is the date you downloaded the bank statement because it is per that day that you're making the reconciliation. So I'm just going to select, for example, uh, this date is just an example based on the data I have here. Then I take start reconciling. Uh, if it's your first time to enter in reconcile, actually at this level, it will not get here directly. It will ask you to, 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 to get started. So I'll start the reconciliation. So um, I will put uh, my cables file on one side and take this on the other side. So there is definitely an imbalance of 1,638.42. What we need to do at this level is to tick is to tick uh, transactions. We check every transaction that exists in our bank statement, and uh, we tick it in our bank account. Um, it's not really well visible, so I will uh, take it this way and try to. Oops, I'm going to expand a little bit so that it can be clearer. Okay, okay, okay. So we will have to tick individual transactions, like for example here. Uh, we have um, a transaction here, 300 dollars. So I'll come here and I tick it because it exists in my bank um, in my bank statement. So as I tick it, you see it will begin to make the calculation, and uh, you see the uh, the payments for 300 dollars. It will be taken um, plus or minus deposit and so on. So I just keep ticking them one by one. Then uh, when I'm done ticking. It's supposed to show you a difference of zero. Like the objective is to balance the bank statement with a bank account such that the difference will be zero. The difference between the starting balance and the, 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 the declared balance. The declared balance are those uh, accumulation of all the amounts that were declared or that were already recorded in the bank statement. So at this level, I have this. I equally have this. I tick it. I have this. So I'm just going to tick them rapidly. So when I take them, I make sure I uh, I, I I I put a, a strike on the on the items I have already ticked. Okay, this particular one I am not seeing it. Okay, this is it. Um, so these two, I take them. All right, so um, after taking the, all the items, after taking all the items, this is what we definitely have. You will see um, the difference. This is the objective. The, the objective is to, is to definitely have the difference. So yeah, I didn't just come directly and tick all, 
all the transactions because there might be some transactions that we recorded and the bank did not record so as you can see all the other ones which are not ticked we will definitely wait for next month and see whether the bank finally um, recorded it but if the bank did not record it then we will um uh, look for ways to to inform the bank once more so that is it uh, the objective is just to balance uh, uh, or to reconcile your bank account with your bank statement as at this particular date such that this difference boils down to zero so you'll just take here finish now and you can view your reconciliation report if um uh, you want to print it for example you can view the re reconciliation report in the form of uh, a pdf or you can uh, print it out Okay, so this is an example of how your reconciliation report is definitely going to look like. So that is it um, about uh, reconciling, check, checking accounts or reconciling banks and credit cards. So um, we have the next item in the list, which is uh, tracking, uh, I, tracking time and millage. So how do you track time in QuickBooks Online? To track time in QuickBooks Online, you, you come to the icon new and uh, you have here the possibility to enter single time activity or weekly uh weekly timesheet this is uh the, the the number of hours that the employees uh, spend might be at work on a particular project so if you take here for example single time entry it is to enter maybe a daily uh a time that the employee have, has spent on the project or has spent at work already by having an early rate um but here you can actually make uh, a, a consolidation of the whole week so if you take for example a single uh, uh, timesheet and uh, under it also depends whether your quickbooks subscription has uh, access to managing time. Here is just um, a time tracking activity. Remember that is an, it is a QuickBooks product called uh, QuickBooks Time. And the QuickBooks Time helps to track the time uh, on projects, uh, the time spent on projects, time spent at work, and even has the possibility to locate um, uh, employees, uh, whether they are at the job place or at the work place or not. So those are some of the options. But here we're just tracking a normal uh, um, a time activity. So. You here you enter uh, the name of the employee in question, the, the name of the employee. So I'll just select this employee, and here you can specify the project under which the employee is working. Uh, because if you're dealing with projects, you definitely uh, see that when you create a project, there is always a sub item under uh, a customer's name. So if it is related to a specific project, then here you have the possibility to select whether um, the time is actually associated uh, to a particular project. Here yeah, I've just selected a, a, a project. As you can see, it is an item. It's a sub account of a particular uh, customer's account. Yeah, um, you can then precise the service you are rendering uh, to the customer. Uh, let me just say um, uh, installation, for example. And here yeah, you have the possibility to put uh, the time. Um, if, if you, for example, want to enter a start time and end time, you might want to take this option. So it will automatically calculate the number of times. And if, you, if, if there was break, it, it will also um, affect it. So at this level, you can, you can make this billable and you put the rate per hour. Yeah? You put the rate that they're going to charge the, the, the employee the, the, that, that that they're going to charge the project per hour. Uh, if I say, for example, start time was twelve and the uh, end time was uh, five p.m. and that uh, there was break for zero one thirty, like there was break for one hour thirty minutes, you definitely see that in summary for the installation of landscape design, uh, the, the the John Johnson worked for three hours forty minutes at a early rate at an early rate of $50 per hour given uh, a total cost. So you definitely go and record the cost and associate it to the respective uh, project uh, we are working on. So that is it about tracking individual uh, time uh, activity. So you can either take save and close or save and new. So I'm just going to take save and close. So we can also see how a weekly uh, timesheet is going to look like if you come to new. You have here weekly timesheet. In this case, it's not just one day, it's it's for a whole week. You can actually enter, as you can see, the very same information. You put um, uh, the, the, the customer's job, uh, you put the service rendered, then you, you you say whether it was billable or not, and you put the number of hours. In this, in this case, it's not going to have start time, end time. It's an, assum it's an assumption that uh, all the time has already been calculated, and there you have the possibility to just put uh, the number of hours that were worked. And as you can see, for Tuesday or for this particular date, it's already, there's already an amount, a, a figure existing there because we previously um, recorded a, a transaction or an activity on this particular date. So you just do the same for all the days of the week. And actually, yeah, at the top, you have the possibility to specify the, the week interval, the week interval for which you're entering this. So that is it. When you're done, you just uh, come here and uh, you definitely take a uh, save and close. So that is it about time, time activities, which is actually very easy. Uh, after making uh, these entries for time, if uh, you go to the expenses, you'll see that um, there, there, there's, there's an expense that is incurred for 
the, the, the employee's work for the number of hours this employee has worked on the, the specific uh, project in question. So um, if, if you interrogate the, the specific project, let me just let me just interrogate uh, a customer's uh, a customer's account at the project. Uh, actually, yeah, the projects have not been activated, but if we activate projects, you clearly see it, and we are going to see projects uh, as we are going ahead. So I'm just going to take that particular customer and uh, I'm just going to 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 interrogate the activities. I'm just going to click on it. So it can show all the activities um, which took place in terms of uh, transactions. So here yeah, you can see uh, there's an expense. You can see installation uh, and the landscape design. So that is it. So um, we get to the next item. We have uh, managing accounts receivable, managing accounts payable, creating customer statements. OK, managing accounts receivable and accounts payable. Uh, accounts receivable and accounts payable are very important aspect to manage uh, in uh, uh, in your accounting because it helps you know for accounts receivable it helps you know uh, how long you should wait before um, you should get money from your customers and accounts payable uh, how long you you will wait uh, uh, before you need to pay your suppliers or your vendors so uh, all of this is more about uh, getting some reports either you come to the search bar and then you, you you search for accounts payable and accounts receivable reports or you can come to the left hand side of uh, your screen, I think it should be left, and you take reports. So as you take reports, we're going to take precisely, yeah, yeah, you can see all sorts of reports, but for this period in time, we want to go more precisely on accounts, um, on who owes us, as you can see, this this an area of who owes us, it means that we're talking about all the reports that are under this title are accounts um, receivable, and yeah, you see, um, there's another report, who you owe, like, this will be more about um, accounts uh, payable. So in terms of who owes us, I will go directly to accounts receivables. You can have uh, an account receivable agent summary. This report, if you interrogate it, on paid balances, on paid balances for each customer's group by days, past, dues. So it's very important to, to see uh, the account receivable agent summary. It, 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 sees, it shows you the number of days that are left for payment, whether they are overdue and so on. If I just, if I just click on it, like, let me let me remove this. If I just click on it to interrogate the report, so this could be uh, your clients, this could be uh, donors or whatsoever. You just need to check uh, the periods um, they, they they are going to pay. So yeah, at the top you precise the date, the date for which you are printing this report, and the year you you, you precise the days per agent um, uh, period. What does this agent period actually mean? If we put thirty days here, it represents like. Okay, if you, if you scroll down here, you're going to see current, you're going to see 1 to 30, 31 to 60. Current represents the sums of money that we should currently be receiving as of now, like amount of money we're expecting right now. And the between 1 to 30 represents the amount of money we should be expecting uh, in the next 30 days, and yet in the next 60 days, and yet in the next 90 days. This can actually help us plan better. Um, uh, and the know might be when we can settle our suppliers and know maybe when we can uh, also settle some other payments which is after a very important report so you can actually change the interval you can add the period if you say for example five periods and the uh, year you say for example an interval of um let's say 40 days and you say run report it's just going to do exactly what uh you are you're asking it to do you run the report in an interval of 40 days and make it into five uh different uh, intervals so that is it about account uh, uh aging agent accounts, uh, receivable account, and you can interrogate much more reports on who owes us. You can have uh, it with details, agent summary with details, collection reports, um, a customer balance salary uh, summary. You just show a summary of the total amount of money that customers are owing you uh, without precisely the number of days that are left uh, for, for payment or the number of days you, are, you should be expecting the payment. And uh, the same way here, yeah, we have um, accounts payable summary, which is just exactly the same thing. But in this case, it represents sums of money that we need to pay within the period or within the interval uh, we are taking into consideration. So here you can see these are amounts we are supposed to be paying currently, $755. And here you have uh, amounts of money we should be expecting to pay in the next 30 days, um, which sums up to $761. So that's it about accounts payable and receivable. You can precise the period for which you want to print, uh, decide the, the, the agent period and the number of periods you want to print. And here you can actually uh, export it, might be uh, in the form of PDF, or you can transfer it via mail uh, to partners. So that is it about accounts payable. Okay, uh, creating uh, customer statements while creating vendors' bills. Creating vendors' bills is 
closely or the same thing as you're uh, entering an expense yeah you can you can add a vendor this adding um, a supplier and uh, yeah you 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 can create a, a bill for the particular vendor in question but what happens when uh, you make a mistake on the bill you created for a vendor you can definitely create a, a vendor's credit which is going to reduce the amount of money that was earlier entered in the bill for example if you create a bill um if you create a bill with a particular vendor for example i'm going to select a vendor for example and um here we we, we let's say we we are we are we are hoping to pay him or uh, let me say so to, we are getting the service from from him or we're getting something from him let me just say we're making purchases yeah we're making purchases uh, either it could be just purchases or um, we could come here and precise actually the items we are purchasing if they are actually inventory items but yeah let me just say uh, we're buying an equipment let me just put any account there that can easily help us let's say we're getting a truck for example um and uh, we're getting this truck on credit and uh, we are entering, for example, ten thousand dollars for the acquisition of this truck on credit. Here is a bill. So, if I validate this transaction, remember, a bill is a transaction you make on credit, right? So, like you, you, you get something from a vendor on credit. Now, if it happens that um, uh, we made a mistake on the amount um, ten thousand dollars, and it was instead supposed to be another amount, like maybe seven thousand five hundred dollars. And uh, that might be what started receiving payment from this invoice or from this bill. It is not advisable to enter in the bill and make changes. Um, in order for, 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 for traceability of documents, you will want to come and instead create a vendor's credit. A vendor's credit is, 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 is like making a deduction that that that, that uh, a deduction from a bill that was earlier created. The same way, when we create an invoice for customers, like we sell goods or service to customers, and then there is a, a reduction or, or there are some items that are not supposed to be sold, or there is a return. We will make um, a, a, a credit memo, a credit memo in order to reduce the amount that was in the invoice. Similarly, for vendors, when we create a bill to reduce the amount that is in the bill, we create a, a vendor's credit. And for, and for us to create a vendor's credit, we will have to start by selecting the vendor uh, for which we earlier created the, the bill. So I'll get there, I'll select the vendor. Oh, can't remember uh, which vendor was that. Um, can't really remember which vendor I chose. I guess it should be the one. Let me rapidly check on which vendor. Let me check. 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 So I'll just go to expenses and I check the recent transaction I just did so I, I, I can know exactly the vendor I used. Okay, it was uh, books by. Uh, basin and uh, it was a truck okay so i'll get here and i take a uh, vendor's credit so i'm selecting the vendor and i select the item line which was truck for example and um, yeah i mentioned uh, the amount say two thousand five hundred dollars so it is by this amount that that invoice is is is, is actually uh, reducing so um, as I do that, I will just take a save and close. The same way, like I was just explaining, if you create an, an, an invoice to a customer and that uh, there's a reduction on the value of the invoice, you definitely want to create a credit a credit memo. So uh, at the end, you see this is a document that shows a reduction of 2,500 uh, and this is another document that shows um, the, the, the bill that was earlier created. So it's more for traceability of uh, information. So uh, here we have... Uh, reporting so yeah overview of quickbooks online reports uh profit and loss report cash flow reports and so on so how do we how do we um, uh, print out reports or get reports in quickbooks all transactions you do invoices uh, uh credit memos sales receipt expenses uh, uh bills and everything every single transaction you do post an accounting to the back end and automatically you get your financial reports and for you to get your financial reports you definitely get to reports and at the level of reports, you can get different type of report. You can equally search for a report at this level. You search for a specific report, but already there are some favorite reports that are there, like balance sheet, uh, income statement, uh, accounts receivable. So if you want to make a report uh, 
favorite you just come and, and click on the star and it will be in the list of favorite uh, reports so yeah you can get reports individually based on the different headings who owes us um, what what you owe sales taxes employees the accountant and so on so i'm just going to open for example uh, the profit and loss statement profit and loss statement and when you open this you have the possibility to to mention the period for which you're printing or you, you, you want to make a preview is it for this year till date is it for last year is this for last month or you can custom it from this day to this date and at this level you precise the accounting method are you making your, your report in the cash accounting system if i take refresh you see information here will definitely change because the cash accounting system doesn't have same values like the accrued accounting system so uh, but it's more preferable to report in the accrued accounting system in order to manage effectively your accounts payables and receivables at this level you can decide um on whether it should show only one 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 column which is that of totals you can equally since for example i've, I've chosen for this year till date like from january to june i can say that okay i want the columns to be in months if i say in months it definitely means that this report will then be separated it will have the total but it will distinguish every single transaction about the income and expenses that happens on individual meaning every report can be customized to your liking so i'll get back they'll surely ask me you can you can print your balance sheet the same way if you want to to to, to preview your balance sheet you can have balance sheet detail balance sheet uh, comparison you just need to scroll down and check on all of those the same way it will show all your assets and all your liabilities the particularity about quickbooks is that if you find that this amount is not a, actually what you expected you can click on it and it takes you to a detailed uh, uh, document that shows detailed transactions that happens before these respective accounts are showing these respective amounts as you can see uh, it has it is showing detailed transactions about um, every uh, every item that is located in your financial reports which is actually very amazing and at the same way you can specify the period and decide whether you want to print it under the cash or the accrual accounting system Another very important thing about the QuickBooks is that you can come here on a management report and they have already a well-organized um, financial report for the different type of financial statement based on the period you will specify here. This will permit you to make complete financial statements by adding notes on financial statement. You could make financial reports on companies overview. If I take, for example, companies overview and, for example, for this year, you will definitely see that it's going to create it as if we are, we're, we're typing the Word document. We will put uh, the, the, the cover page information as we want and here we have the table of content here we then have the different uh, notes or preliminary pages you make some preliminary pages to explain what the report is all about um, and uh, at the bottom you definitely see all the financial reports you decide to have uh, the, 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 the document you decide to write your financial report like i can come here and add a new report i can add something like a cash flow statement so if i ask for example the cash flow statement to profit and the profit and loss and balance sheet you see it is another statement that's going to be there and that we are going to prepare so interpretations by line would then be done because um at the end of it all when you select uh, individual items like this you you can um okay so we get here exactly so when you want to print it it's going to detail the reports that are in each of um of these lines so if i take for example uh save and close no let me let me let me say uh, save save and save export as pdf you will definitely you will also export as word you definitely see that all the informations you enter inside will be very much visible let me sh let me make a print preview so that it will be uh, better to see so here you have the cover page uh, based on the information you entered on it you have the preliminary page then you begin to have the financial report so before you get here you must have made all the adjustments so that as you're printing these this way it is showing the detailed information you actually need to to show for the financial report so as you save this, it will become a memorized report where you can later on uh, print it. Like I'm just going to call it company overview one. I take save. And the next time I want to get here, I can just enter in the memorized report and uh, I will have the possibility to print it as many times or make some editings on a different reports I will want to see inside. So those are some little tricks that are in QuickBooks uh, online. And uh, I hope uh, we continue in the next video.